Yeah, Ice Coleon show. Tune in for the hottest exclusive interviews. The latest news. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Tune in. Ice Coleon show. Thank you. Two bars. If you pause or you fuck up, then I'll start rapping again. Like, you know what I'm saying? But nowadays, they let you... First of all, it already be wild bricks with this fake crowd reaction. Niggas act like they so, um, they, they playing the crowd. So now they got time to think and they doing their little theatrics to the nigga and to the crowd. But why they doing that? They think that they next line. That's why you saying in quarantine time, it's a lot harder to perform and be aggressive as these niggas used to be. Because now there's no crowd screaming. You can't stop for 30 minutes and act like the crowd distracting you or act like your man ain't got your water. Now it's quarantine time, so the shit got to keep coming back to back. Niggas want to hear if you can really rap. And now they got to remember the shit, and they can't remember it. That's why they so much. It's common sense. I know this because I know the science. The average person don't know. They going to find out later. It's going to take stuff like this to keep happening for them to understand what I've been saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, you said earlier about the, the record you produced, man. How long how long you been producing, man? Um... On my, on my Bars album, um, after I got out of jail and recovered from the accident, I started working on a new project, went out to Arizona, and Swiss flew out. And Neo, he was a producer I was working with at the time, he was asleep, so I jumped on Neo MP, and I made my first beat. It actually made the album all by myself. It's a classic. People love it. It's the first beat I produced, and it made the album. Which record is that? Oh, I knew. It's the um, by myself. It's on the Bars album. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, even like some of the biggest producers ever, if you listen to these stories about when they made the first beat, people ain't like them. It took them years or times to just keep practicing to get their shit up. But the first beat I made made my album and people loved it. So I, that's how I knew I had potential to make beats. But I still ain't take that shit really serious. I still was too locked in a rap. Just like like um like eight months, a year ago, I started really locking in and going in harder with beats. So I started releasing them. I got music on all platforms, you could pull it up. I just released probably like eleven or twelve, thirteen new records recently in twenty twenty that I produced myself and wrote a hundred percent of it. So while I was working getting better with the beats, I just was putting them out at the same time because I'm a producer. So for me to be this nice one, I'm just starting is already just showing like, imagine what I'm going to be in six more months or another year or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still the best with this bar shit. It's not like I'm letting up and I'm producing now. So my bars like, uh, no, I'm, I'm still talking that shit with this rap shit. Outworking everybody that rap. And I'm going hard with the production shit. Plus, I got a whole production team of niggas that really produce. Like, niggas that have been producing for 10, 15 years already. And that's all they do. Now, I don't really rap or do else. They just produce. Got a whole production team of niggas like that, too, that get busy. So, I just love music. So, I just like to do everything that I can do. And that's something I could do a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were saying, man, like you said, you know what I'm saying? You're the, you're the king of, the, of, this, of this battle shit, of these bars, man. In your opinion, who, who would you say are the top five battlers all time, battle rappers? Um, I don't know. I'm not a fan of battle rappers, but, um... Or MCs. Some of the, some of the biggest battle rappers I would have to say is Murder Mook, Loaded Lux, Pride Daylight, and my homie Jag. Jag got a battle coming up at the end of August. It's for RBE. He battling Mav Hoffa. So, I'll put him up in there. Yeah, yeah. Is, are, there are there any of those uh, that you would go up against? Um, no, but you haven't battled. I don't think you battle like Daylight or nobody like that, right? When they offer me the money that I'm that I say I want, I let them pick who they want me to battle. So niggas can pick whoever. Like I don't got no picks. I'm not like that's like fan stuff. When I want to battle him, like for what? I'm not a hater, so I don't hate him and want to battle him for a reason. And I'm not a fan, so I don't want to battle him to be next to him. So it's like whoever they want to pick, like it don't matter to me. Like, 
So anybody can get it, man. Anybody on that list, any list, anybody can get it with me. I've been like that since a kid, like letting niggas know anybody can get it. It don't matter how old you is, what race you is. How, like, it don't matter what coast you from. Like, it don't matter how real you is, how many times you went to jail, how smart you is, if you went to college or not. Like, it don't matter. Like, anybody. Like, <laughs> Anybody, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, man, so tell me, man, what's what's next with you, man? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to see who's going to put this money up so we can get another battle in. But in the meantime, what, what you got going on, man? Music, man, music. Dropping these singles, dropping this music. I got two projects coming this month. So, music. Dropping the most music. Like, I'm working. So, I got these projects coming. I got this. This video that I'm about to shoot tomorrow, so just working, man. Yeah, yeah. You still ever uh, link up with Swiss and get any, uh, get any music in? I don't even know if Swiss working on music right now. You you know what 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 Swiss songs out right now? Cause everybody asked me that in the interview because they just think because I used to just put out songs with Swiss that I should still be working with them. But it's like I'm super grown. I told you I got my own production company. I was working with Swiss when he was making money off working. Like, I was signed to his production company, so it was a business for him to do songs with me and work with me now. But now that I'm a independent machine and he don't his thing, it's not as beneficial for us to work with each other like it used to be. So we still family, we still communicate, but we just not working all the time. I recently released a song with Swiss called Saved by the Children. I just released that on um, not too long ago, but um, I'm willing to work with Swiss whenever, man. Like, I mean, we started together, so he always could reach out. I'm a workaholic. I told you I'm about to put out two projects, two whole full projects this month. Um, So I'm a workaholic, but I'm not sure if Swiss is focused on music like that, like I used to be. You got so much other shit going on. I don't know if you're making beats or not. Yeah, yeah. What about uh what about a versus, man? What if there was like a battle rap edition of versus or something like that? Would you just paint something like that? I got enough records for a versus. Mm. I got a big ass records. And I got a lot of hard ass records. But one thing about verses is like these niggas that's jumping on verses, everybody wanna ride the wave because it'll get you like more streams, it'll get everybody looking at you, so it seems fun and nobody could really lose. But I'm really willing to battle for real. Like these niggas that be in verses or in battle rap, we can battle for real. Like see who the best with new raps that we wrote. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like see who the best. We can add 20 verses that like, go, let's go 20 verses for 20 verses with anybody. I'll do that shit with anybody in the world now. So a verses is baby shit. That ain't nothing. You could go on any stream or platform and just play 20 of the top songs and you know what they gonna do so it's like it's good it's entertaining but I don't really look at it as a battle I look at it as a, a celebration of the music and the shit you done and a lot of niggas get work that niggas put in so when you do verses you can refresh niggas memory or like might be a whole new group of niggas that don't know and they, they might be like oh that shit hot they start searching it looking for it it's good for that but you know what I'm saying I don't look at it like a battle do you uh do you have any aspirations of ever getting back into the mainstream system? Or are you cool where you at as far as being able to make music, being independent, put it out how you want to put it out? You know what I mean? Out of freedom to do all that. I'm not trying to figure out a solution to get back in the mainstream deal. If I wanted a mainstream deal, I would have signed one. I took mm -hmm. one when I was 17, signed the number one right back in the Swiss. And that's when I was a baby. I ain't no shit. I told you I was just coming from the shit. I didn't even really know how to make music all the way. And they was throwing millions and millions of dollars around at me. I'm about big machines. So, it's not like I'm trying to figure out how to get signed. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, I got to do something. No, no, no. I, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean that. I just mean, is that like an aspiration? Do you care to be back into the mainstream? No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about to the people that's watching because it do be people confused like that. Like, I got to switch something or alter something or I got to work with this type of producer or I got to do this type of flow. They think it's something that you got to do 
to get a mainstream deal. Like, nah, I wanted to be independent. Like, I wanted this opportunity to be independent and do everything from the muscle, and I want to stay like this. Yeah, yeah. That's what, at least here we got some questions. We got any questions in here? Uh, oh my God, we ain't gonna ask that, let's see. Questions, questions, questions. I just don't understand how even the top people that's in the industry now complain about contracts, complain about management deals, complain about how they not no money, complain about how the companies rob them. I'm talking about the people that's charting right now. That's yeah. hot now. They all complain. Nobody say their situation lit. The only ones is the ones that's confused, fronting in the beginning. But once they really get in the business, nobody have everybody complaining. Even the niggas that's selling the most records, winning awards, and the biggest chains on, they complaining that they getting robbed. Nobody happy with this shit. But soon as niggas talk to niggas with talent, they like, when you gonna get a deal? Or you gonna go back with the make? Like that's the out. Like that's the thing to do. And right. I don't fight for nobody. Like even the artists that I love from the seventies. In the 60s and shit, like, they've been telling me that this industry fucked up. I looked at niggas from the 80s. They told me it's fucked up. Niggas from the 90s said, yo, we got robbed. Then the niggas that came around my time, 2000s and shit. Yo, this shit ain't shit. This shit is robbery. So why the fuck is niggas so happy to just sign to a major? It's like, man, it's definitely money getting passed around, but you're not making the right amount of money. So you should just figure out why the money getting passed around and just figure out a way to get it on your own instead of relying on these people to just put you in a situation. Yeah. Nah, I, I definitely feel that. I feel that. Hey, man. I understand why they do it. It's a business. And they geniuses for doing it. I ain't not them. I'm just saying, if you understand in the business, why would you put yourself in that predicament? Like, I don't knock the three-car Molly niggas. Like, I was locked up with a three-car Molly nigga and a nigga that did the top all in it. And he showed me that them niggas can never lose at that game. You can never beat them niggas. Like, they just playing with your mind. They just gonna always take your money every single time. You never could beat them niggas with three-car Molly or that top game. That shit is, like, it's rigged. So I would never play that shit. I would never spend my money with that. But I'm not going to go past every three car Molly and just get that announcement that you could never win. And you could never do that. Like, if you want to play, play. Like, you know what I'm saying? I probably made a mistake in the past when I was a baby. Maybe I played when I was 11 years old or something. Who knows? I'm not going to blow they shit up. I'm not knocking them. Y'all do what y'all do. But I'm not going to do it because I know for sure. I know the fucking, I, I understand the shit. So, it's the same thing with the business, man. Yeah. Ain't not the niggas going to go get deals because y'all want to play three car Molly. Go ahead. Gamble. And sometimes, in order for them to get big money, they might, ne- might let somebody that's walking around win some small money. Nigga think he won some small money, think he really won. But nah, you ain't really winning, though. We really winning. Like, you know? Yeah. Abel's thing. Might give niggas a little small bit of money to make it seem like they went a little bit. Like, you know? There's a whole lot of money you're not getting, though. People who want to get deals. That's yeah. what that. Nobody want to play if they just won every hand. They got to make it seem like niggas be winning sometimes. So people be like, oh, I want to bet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Same shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, and especially for artists like yourself, who's already established, you know, following, you got your fan base. Whatever you put out, you can go straight to the consumer. You know what I'm saying? For sure. These niggas that's in the industry don't even got no access to the, the people that's buying these shit. They don't even know how to get in contact with them or how to get back with them. So when I was going platinum or when I was going gold or when I was selling all these records, I had no access to people that went in the stores and bought the records. So if I came out with another record, how could I let them know that I was about to drop another record? I would have to rely on going through that same machine and hopefully everything that we do to them same people when they hear about it. Yeah, yeah. But you can have more access to your consumer. You can really get the... Um, social media information you can really get the emails you can really get the information and when you about to drop again you can send off blast to everybody that bought your shit before so they can want to buy your shit again so, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, man, uh, we're going to wrap it up. But before we get out of here, man, like you, you've accomplished a lot, you know what I'm saying, made classic, you know, hit records on the mainstream side, classic battles, you know what I'm saying, still got the bars going to this day, man. What do you want your legacy to be defined as? The GOAT, the greatest. Nobody could fuck with me with the science, putting bars together and rhyming. And never cheating on it. Like, you listen back to my old catalog, any point in my career, and you will see I never cheat on the science. You will never hear me rhyming one syllable or doing some remixed ass, some flipped around ass punch that a million niggas use. You will never hear me doing that. Like, I never cheat on the science. So, that's what I want to go down for. Yeah, yeah. Being the best. For sure, for sure. That's what it is, man. When I, I got to see some beats, too, bro. I don't know if, uh, if you know what I'm saying, people I told you, man, but I produce some shit, man. So I got to give you some beats, man, see if we can get some work in. Let's do it. Shit, Liddy at Gmail. Send it. Bet, bet, bet. But yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, chopping it up with me, man. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. But I appreciate you, bro. To the next time. Bet that. Easy. Yeah, Ice Coleon Show. Tune in for the hottest exclusive interviews. The latest news. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Tune in. Ice Coleon Show. Thank you.